Hey there, Shane here. John Mueller over at Google, he kind of spilled the beans on part of Google's algorithm uh, related to site architecture and how that influences ranking number one on Google Organic Search. So yeah, this is a Search Engine Journal. This is the article. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Search Engine Journal, basically it's just a SEO news website that I regularly check. Uh, for, for interesting articles that pop up. Uh, and here's John Mueller. If you've never seen his face, again, he's a senior webmaster trends analyst. He basically does these webmaster hangouts. And he answered a question related to uh, this person who had a forum on their site, right? Basically, um, this person has a forum on their site that is really slow. And they're worried that if this forum is really slow and not a really great user experience, is that going to affect the rankings of the rest of his site, right? Ultimately, that's what he's worried about. And it's a totally valid point. And it's very common for people who have part of their website isn't as good like or as high quality as the rest of it, right? So say you have your about us, privacy policy, um, some of these other informational pages, they're not that good, they're not good quality content, right? Uh, and you know, maybe in some cases they're 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 very thin, right? Now, is that hurting uh, this guy's website by having this form? Is it hurting your website if you have these low quality pages? And basically what John said is it is, right? Now he, he went to in a couple of uh, big things and you know, I just wanna pick apart some of the things that really stood out to me. Uh, and the first one was about this right here, right? Um, so the Google Google Google's algorithm will do its best to get as granular as possible and really separate um, things it's seeing, right? It's not gonna it's not gonna by definition or by default uh, kind of lump everything together. But if it can't it can't say oh this this and this are the same thing, and it will usually do that, right? Basically, Google will try to look at pages individually, but it is a robot and it doesn't know sometimes. Um, so what happens is if it can't, it's gonna group things together and aggregate. And that's when you have some of this bad content aggregated with your good content and it brings everything down and hurts your rankings, right? So that's basically what, what this uh, granular statement is right here, right? And that brings me to this next bit right here, right? So our site architecture will help Google rank a website, right? Um, if you're not familiar with site architecture is or what it looks like when it's actually in practice, you can see my site learning jewelry is very much, I very much think about site architecture with doing anything uh, related to the site, right? So you can see here that I have a gemstones directory. So anything related to gemstones, I publish in this directory and I create hierarchy around gemstones. So if I create content around purple gemstones, you can see here we got purple gemstones and then gemstones in the home page. And if you were to scroll down, I believe I have other things even deeper in the site architecture uh, related to amethyst earrings right here. So we have purple gemstone earrings. Uh, so so gem, purple gemstone earrings, purple gemstones, and then gemstones themselves. You can see how everything starts to sort of act, like be very, uh, it helps Google understand differences in content, right? So ultimately, that's basically what this is saying right here. Site architecture is a reference to how web pages are linked and grouped together within a site. Good site architecture groups web pages together in meaningful ways, right? Just like I'm doing here, grouping together uh, parts of my website in meaningful ways. And if you go back actually here, you can see in earrings, I do the same exact thing. All earrings stuff is grouped up the same way. Uh, and ultimately that's helping me outrank people that are more authoritative, that have bigger domains that have been around longer uh, because I'm doing this directory style approach, right? Um, you know, if you do this directory style approach, Mueller actually said specifically, you know, Google, it helps Google understand, right? It's literally, he's literally telling you the algorithm, right? He obviously, uh, he can't say every little detail, but he's basically saying site architecture matters, right? So when you're putting your site together, you gotta be very intentional with how you structure things and how you create directories. These flat architectures, so this actually brings me to the next thing I wanna talk about, uh, flat um, architecture versus hierarchical architecture, right? Where you have one homepage that links out to everything um, and it doesn't actually create buckets of content or categories versus a flat, uh, versus a hierarchical, which you just saw with, with learning jewelry. Basically, I have homepage, then earrings, then gemstones, and then uh, necklaces, and then diamonds, and then everything below it is like the next level deep, right? So if you were to go into my, uh, you know, my James Allen review, you can see here that reviews James Allen. And then if you go even deeper, then we have articles about like, does James Allen let you build your own ranks? So you can see I'm creating uh, relevance around James Allen because I want to rank. I want to rank for James Allen review because I know this is a very valuable keyword for me. But if it's hard to rank for it, right? It's a very competitive keyword. So what I do is I create a silo, uh, a site architecture around it. So I let Google know, hey, this part of my website is about James Allen, this company 
which is about diamonds, right? So this is ultimately helping me rank. And this is what John Mueller is saying in this article and this answer to this person's question, right? They shouldn't, um, they shouldn't create this like broad site that covers all of these things, right? And this forum over here, this content over here, because it creates like this big bucket of, of noise. Because you have to end of the day, think of it, think of Google like a robot, right? Google doesn't understand what your site's about. You have to give it hints. You have to leave breadcrumbs, trails of information that ultimately help Google understand what your site is about, right? That's why I have uh, this site, these basically these internal links within the silo here. I got best amethyst pendants, best amethyst earrings. Um, and then within this article, you can see that it's very much about these things. So ultimately this is helping Google understand, okay, this article is about purple gemstones. That means if everything connected to it must also be about gemstones or purple. So it's creating relevance, right? Now, if you don't do this, this actually may negatively affect your site, right? So let me just re read what he said. On the other hand, if we have to do this on a per URL basis, basically, if you don't have site architecture, Google looks at a per URL basis where uh, it can't really tell um, if this article is about, is within this forum or it's not, or, or it should be, it, it creates confusion within the algorithm. The robot gets confused and you don't want to let Google try to understand on its own. You want to just reduce the variables as much as possible. So <clears throat> basically they'll be forced to take this aggregate score across your whole site versus a directory score. So the way I create content, I assume that Google will score my directories their own, uh, their own score, right? So my reviews directory might actually be scored differently than a diamonds directory, right? Or a, a buying diamonds directory. So this actually, this is, you think of your, think of directories on your sites, like mini websites, right? So every time you want to go into a new, uh, a new category, say you're a uh, home improvement site and you want your, say you've been creating content around kitchen remodeling, and now you want to go into like bathroom remodeling, you would have, you know, instead of, uh, instead of this right here, you might have like, um, kitchen, you know, forward slash would be one directory. And then you would have bathroom as another one. But as soon as you roll that out, that new directory, I would, I would expect that that directory to get crawled less. Google will not look at it as much in the beginning. It's almost like creating a new site within your site because it's a new directory and Google has to understand that directory. And then uh, evaluate it based on the rest of your site, the authoritativeness of your site, how it relates to other sites, and ultimately understand what it's about, right? So that's how I usually do it. And I'll actually build links specifically to this directory about the subtopic, right? So I have a home site and if I do like kitchen remodeling, um, I'll actually build links about kitchens, about uh, remodeling to that directory. And then if I start this bathroom directory, which is I, I assume basically a mini site, I'll actually build links to that directory so that uh, I, Google will understand, hey, this directory is about kitchen, this directory is about bathrooms. I have separate links that are uh, basically separate links, link backlink profiles per directory, right? That's really important when you're trying to rank competitively for a whole nother uh, sort of silo of keywords, right? So bathrooms are not kitchens, kitchens are not bathrooms. So you have to have, think in terms of, okay, um, I need to build a whole nother set of links to this directory and ultimately that will help me rank, right? So when I was, when, for my pest control site, I had a bed bugs directory, I had a roaches directory, I had a, uh, you know, ants directory. And ultimately that helps Google understand relevance related to each of those silos, right? So if you have a site, make sure you're thinking about directories because ultimately that will help you rank better, right? And get more traffic. All of my sites, sites have directories. All the students and clients that I work with, I make sure they have directories and it works. It ultimately gets traffic faster, right? So let me actually show you uh, another example right here. I actually want to pull up Ahrefs real quick. So I have Ahrefs open real quick and I just want to show you something that not a lot of people do or use Ahrefs and Ahrefs is again a tool, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this directory and just plug it in here. And what this is going to do, is going to give me the um, our, our authority of this directory, right? So you can see here very quickly that just this directory, this is the traffic to just this directory. This is how many referring domains this directory has. So the way you should be thinking about your website is every directory is its own mini website. So in this case, gemstones would be my gemstones directory. And you can see here that it's doing pretty good, right? You know, we, we had a bit of a spike, it came down, now we're going back up. Now it's just ebbing and flowing, right? On the flip side, right, if we were to look at, say, my earrings directory, we come over here, grab my earrings, and we plug that in, we can see just how that compares to my gemstones directory. 
And you can see here, it looks very similar. You know, there's a, a bit of a spike, it grows, it grows. And what you can actually do is say, hey, does this directory need more links? I don't see as many backlinks to this directory as I do uh, another directory. And ultimately, if you see that, hey, one directory has less traffic, it might be because it has less links. And then this actually gets into the, a more advanced topic called log file analysis. This is way past the scope of this video, but basically once you understand this, and this is why people should use directories because it makes it very easy for you to uh, see where Google is in your site and actually do a log file analysis. If you're not familiar with what that is, basically uh, you can pull the server logs that Google is is pinging your site. Every time it goes to your site, it's, it's, it's pinging your site. It's basically a visitor, right? It'll request the site. It'll say, I'm here, Let's show me the site, and then it'll go to the next page. Now, what happens is it'll visit your site a certain amount of times per day, and then you can actually pull all those logs and then upload them into a tool like Screaming Frog Log File Analysis, and you actually see where Google is in your entire site. And yeah, so again, out of scope of this video, but super important, and I'll do a, view, a video on that in the future. Anyway, I just wanna do a quick video on what John Mueller said and the importance of site architecture, right? When you're creating your blog, your website, you should be thinking, okay, how can I organize this site in such a way where it makes it really easy for Google and my users to find what they're looking for and ultimately rank higher in search results, right? So hopefully this was helpful. And I know uh, John Mueller is it's pretty interesting reading those uh, Webmaster article uh, sort of uh, recaps and, and what he says. I always like listening to him because he sometimes he spills the beans on some um, parts of the algorithm that you wouldn't understand uh, without him like clarifying. So it's really cool. Uh, anyway, if you like this kind of uh, video, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Lots more blogging content, SEO content to come. So if you like that kind of stuff, as well as online business stuff, so I have more of that as well. So anyway, uh, my name is Shane with shanedudgood.com, and I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.